Als bij een politieline-up alle getuigen dezelfde dader aanwijzen... hebben ze het zeer waarschijnlijk mis. Wetenschap vandaag. Stel dat een politieke partij de verkiezingen wint met 100% van de stemmen. Dan gelooft niemand dat. Want dat we allemaal hetzelfde zouden denken, nee, dat bestaat niet. So here's an extreme example where unanimous opinion obviously means something is fishy. Derek Abbott van de Universiteit van Adelaide in Australië. If that ever happens, it would be very, very suspicious, wouldn't it? And perhaps there was some uh, voter rigging. Maar als 100% van de ooggetuigen bij een politie line-up dezelfde dader aanwijzen dan zien we dat juist als meer bewijs. Terwijl uit eerder onderzoek van psychologen blijkt... dat mensen bij een roofoverval er in de helft van de keren naast zitten. Forensic psychologists have done studies of police line-ups. And what they found is that misidentification rates... amongst actual real people can be as high as 48%. Dus als alle getuigen dezelfde verdachte aanwijzen... dan is dat raar en waarschijnlijk fout. En toch, als het niet gaat om een roofoverval, maar om een ontvoering... waarbij de getuigen een maand lang in het huis van de verdachte hebben gezeten... Ja, dan zou die 100% weer wel voor de hand liggen. Zonder dat we nou precies de formules gaan benoemen... Abbott heeft beschreven hoeveel geloof je mag hechten aan zo'n percentage... aan de consensus onder de ooggetuigen. Als er een error rate was van een soort van misidentification van, say, 50%, which is similar to a police lineup which was 48% then that is like tossing a coin and as everybody knows if you toss a coin without maths if you toss a coin over and over again you might get three heads in a row and you feel lucky you get four you feel very lucky five six sort of six seven you're starting to think hang on a minute what's going wrong here perhaps this coin is biased And by the time you've tossed this coin 20 times and you've got heads 20 times in a row, you are now certain something is wrong with this coin. And so you'll check it. So we intuitively understand this. But what we don't have an understanding of is uh, what the actual numbers are for real cases. We don't know what the error rates are. En eigenlijk grijpt hij daarbij terug op een oude Joodse wet. There's an ancient Jewish tradition written in the Talmud that says if all... 23 judges uh, recommend the, the criminal to be executed. If there's a unanimous opinion that uh, that he should be executed, then uh, the criminal should be acquitted and let off. Als 23 rechters unaniem iemand ter dood veroordelen, de verdachte moet worden vrijgesproken. Want waarschijnlijk is er in die rechtszaak iets niet helemaal goed gegaan. It seems uh, wrong. If everybody agrees. It seems wrong because we're used to thinking, hey, if everybody agrees, this must be correct. And so what we've done in this research paper is to actually show that, hey, this does in fact make sense. En tot hier gaat het vooral om rechtszaken en politieonderzoek. Maar het probleem met unanimiteit, met consensus, zit op veel meer plekken, zegt Abbott. One of the things I personally find a little bit annoying, uh, I don't know if this is like this in Holland, but uh, in other parts of the world, if there is a committee meeting in a corporation or a government institution and you're trying to decide something in the committee, uh, they like to have a unanimous opinion in the committee. Yes. Uh, ranking job applications or looking at performance indicators of, of, of different individuals. Uh, so say if 19 people in the room all agree and there's the one twentieth guy who's disagreeing, What happens is the committee has to keep going until you've convinced that 20th person. Perhaps what our analysis is saying is that uh, this is the wrong thing to do. What we should be doing is recording in the meeting that the 20th person disagreed, but hey, that's okay. That just means that the meeting shouldn't be suspected of bias, that there was some disagreement. So I think the message is we should embrace some disagreement and not always try to push for unanimity in committee meetings. Die gedachte is natuurlijk even wennen, zeker in een land als Nederland, polderend als wij zijn. I think it's reasonable to say that you've got a consensus of 18, the other two disagreed, and hey, we should live with that, and hey, that's evidence 
that we didn't present biased evidence that just made everybody automatically agree to the proposal. And people have operated like this, um, like there's, a, there's an old story that Walt Disney, uh, the American famous cartoonist who invented Disneyland, that uh, whenever he had a new idea, he would present it to his board of directors. And uh, if they all agreed and said, hey, this is fantastic, let's do it, he would do the opposite. He would say, no, I'm not doing it now. He would only get excited if there was some disagreement to his idea. <laughs> and, uh, and you can see the wisdom of that. He's ensuring that there was real data presented to this boardroom and that they were really thinking and they weren't just following his uh, charismatic uh, delivery of this uh, project and just being yes men. And I think our paper supports this approach. Je mag dus zelf kiezen of je vertrouwen hebt in het enorme zakelijke succes van Disney of in de artistieke kwaliteit van zijn films en zijn pretparken of in de wiskunde van Abbott. In dit geval wijst alles dezelfde kant op zonder dat dat de betrouwbaarheid in de weg zit. Zou ik denken, de weg zit. Zou ik denken, de weg zit.